So we're going to continue section 6.3, looking at those trig equations and talking about solving them. So the second part of this section, we did the first part earlier in the week. The second part of this section is going to deal with a problem like this. And the thing that I want you to notice when you look at this problem, solving tangent 2 theta equaling negative 1, what I want you to pick up on is that the part inside the parentheses up until this point has usually just been a theta. So if there is something different than just a theta inside this parentheses, that's an indication to me that this problem is going to require a little bit more work. Okay, so the ones that we did at the beginning of this section in the last presentation, those problems would have looked like, for example, it would have just said tangent theta is equal to negative 1, and they were fairly easy to solve. But the fact that we have something else in that parenthesis means that it's going to be a little bit more difficult. So you want to try to separate that in your head, that an easier problem would just have a theta, one that requires a little more work is going to have something other than just a theta inside that parenthesis. All right, so what we're going to do to get started with this problem is we're first going to just pretend for a few minutes that it is just a theta. All right, so I'm going to look at this problem and suppose that the problem had looked just like this. So something similar to what we talked about last time. And so remember that the way that I treat this problem is I consider the fact that on my tangent function, I know that tangent is positive in the first and the third quadrants. And I know that tangent is negative in the second and the fourth. So since we're looking for places where tangent is equal to negative one, I know that I need to pull an answer for quadrant 2 and also an answer for quadrant 4. Okay, And then remember that we said that we're going to base that answer on what it would be in the first quadrant. So again, I sort of make an assumption here for just a minute and I ask myself, where is tangent equal to 1 in the first quadrant? And I know that that's happening here at pi over 4, okay, because I know that tangent pi over 4 is 1. So as I move into the other quadrants that I need, when I look at quadrant 2, I know that I'm going to be looking at this diagonal line here at 3 pi over 4. And then in quadrant 4, reflecting this line down, I'm also going to be looking at this diagonal line here and that's going to be at 7 pi over 4. Okay, so that is the first step on this problem. Like I said, pretend for a minute that it doesn't have anything other than just a theta and come up with your answers for that problem. All right, so once that's done, then what we have to do, and this is the part of it that's a little bit complicated for some students, is we have to look at a rotation on those two angles. So for example, if I look at the angle 3 pi over 4, okay, so I'm going to try to draw it out here. All right, so there's my initial side, and here's my terminal side. All right, so I know that that angle is 3 pi over 4. Now, I know that if I were to start my initial side at the same place and rotate all the way around and come back to that line, that my trig value would remain the same. Okay, so if the tangent at 3 pi over 4 is equal to negative 1, 
then the tangent at this new angle would also equal negative 1 because it's the same angle. It's just a different way of describing it. It includes a rotation, but it stops at the same place. So what I need to do is I need to figure out what that angle is. So to figure out that rotation, I know that if I go all the way around on the angle, that I would take the angle that I already have, the 3 pi over 4, and I would essentially add a rotation to it. So adding a rotation is adding 2 pi, because remember 2 pi goes all the way around the circle. Okay, so again, let me just kind of show, make sure you're understanding that. So here's what we're doing. We're saying, first of all, and I kind of wrote this in a backwards order, but first of all, we're going to start at our initial side and we're going to do a rotation of 2 pi. That takes me to that. And then I'm going to do an additional 3 pi over 4, and that puts me in the same place as I was there. Okay, so now let's add these two together. All right, so I know that if I'm going to add these two together, that I have to have a common denominator. And that common denominator is not going to need to be 4 in this case. All right, so this 2 pi over 4, or this 2 pi, I'm going to write as, remember we want a denominator of 4. So I need something over 4 that is the same thing as 2 that would be 8, right? So 8 over 4 is the same thing as 2, and then we'll put the pi on there. So when I add those together, 3 pi and 8 pi, that's going to give me 11 pi over 4. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put that up here as another possible solution to that tangent being equal to negative 1. Okay, and now I'm going to do it again. All right, so instead of doing one rotation, I'm going to do one rotation, then I'm going to do another rotation, and then I'm going to go to 3 pi over 4. All right, so that is like taking the 3 pi over 4 and adding a rotation and adding another rotation, right? And remember that those two pi's can be written as 8 over 4. And now we're going to add that up. So 8, 8, and 3 makes 19 pi over 4. And that's another solution. And I could keep doing this as long as I want to. I don't think I want to do more than, usually 3 is enough, but I'm going to put a dot 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 and I can come back and add more if I need to. Now, we want to simplify this as much as possible, okay? So I don't want to be writing out at the bottom of the page here a calculation for each of these things and then trying to find a common denominator, it just takes me too long. So let's look at the pattern of what's happening. All right, so to get from this 3 to that 11, we added 8. And to get from that 11 to that 19, we added 8 again. So I'm going to continue with that pattern on the bottom one. So I'm starting with 7 pi over 4. I'm going to add 8. That's going to give me 15 pi over 4. I'm going to add 8 again. That's going to give me 23 pi over 4. And again, I could keep going as long as I wanted to, but typically 3 in each line is enough. Okay, so we're going to go through a couple of examples. So hopefully by the time we do it a few times, it'll start clicking into place. I know it's kind of a lot to, to grasp sometimes the first time through. All right, so the second step, once we get those rotations done, 
Then the second step is to move to the actual problem. So the actual problem, remember, was tangent 2 theta is equal to negative 1. Okay, so the idea here is that I need to somehow take this part right here and make it equal to each of these answers. I'm going to start with the 3 pi over 4. So in other words, if I could get this part right here to be 3 pi over 4, then I know that when I take the tangent of 3 pi over 4, I, got, I have negative 1. Okay? So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to take this 2 theta, and I'm going to say, okay, that has to equal 3 pi over 4. So let me figure out how that works. So what do I have to put in for theta so that when I multiply it by 2, I get that 3 pi over 4 that I wanted? Okay, so I'm going to solve this equation for theta. Now, we have a couple of options here. I can divide by 2, all right, or I can multiply by a half. And it's really the same thing, but I think I'm going to multiply by a half just because it's a little bit easier to deal with. All right, so half of 2, I know that that's 1. It's going to cancel on the left, and it's going to give me just the theta. And then on the right, 3 pi times 1 is 3 pi, and 4 times 2 is 8. Okay, so for a solution to my original problem, I'm going to stick it down here. The first solution is 3 pi over 8. Okay. Now, the nice thing about this is that when I move to the second solution in my list, which will be 11 pi over 4, okay, so I'm going to make this change. I'm going to put 11 pi over 4 right here, and I'm going to recalculate. And what I want you to realize is that we're going to have to do the same thing to work it out. So we're still going to be multiplying by a half. All right, so that one is going to become 11 pi over 8. And that's the second answer. So by now, I'm hopefully saying to myself, okay, so every time I take one of these answers in step one, I'm going to be multiplying it by one half. So maybe I can just go ahead and sort of jump in here. So I'm going to take this 19 pi over 4. I'm going to multiply it by a half. That's going to give me another answer. That's going to give me 19 pi over 8. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing around the bottom here. All right, so 7 pi over 4, I'm going to multiply by a half. That's going to give me 7 pi over 8. The next one, if I multiply by a half, I'm going to get 15 pi over 8. The next one, if I multiply by a half, I'm going to get 23 pi over 8. Okay, and then we have all these dot, dot, dots that we kind of have to think about with this. So the last thing that I want to sort of call your attention to is this restriction on where we're supposed to be with our answers. So they're saying that the final answers cannot go outside of one rotation of the circle. Okay, so if I look at my answers, all of my answers are over 8. So I need to know what is 2 pi if it has a denominator of 8. So let me think for a second. What over 8 is the same thing as 2? So that would be 16. So I don't want an answer in my list that is any bigger than 16 pi over 8. Okay, so what that tells me is that this 19 pi over 8, it's too big. So I'm going to get rid of it.
And this 23 pi over 8, it's bigger than 16 as well. So I'm going to get rid of it. All right, and so that leaves me only with, and that's a terrible line, that leaves me with only these four solutions for my problem. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stop right there with this one, and then I'm going to do a separate presentation, and we're going to go through it a couple more times, but I want to keep these a little shorter so that I can get them uploaded tonight. All right, so I'm going to close this one out, and then I'm going to start another one with two additional examples.